from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Temperatures outside are some of the coldest this winter and has people looking for shelter where you can go to escape the cold. Health experts with more on what patients need to know about COVID-19 case numbers surging as students are heading back to school. And taking a look at city cam here, it looks like clear skies, but the temperature has certainly dropped. Good morning. It's six o'clock on Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. It's the new year, Sarah. Yeah. How'd you ring it in? Happy new year. Um, I took a nap between 1030 and 1130, <laughs> woke up at 1130, watched some countdown show, walked nice. outside, you know, San Antonio lit, lit up, up the sky, <laughs> lit Definitely up, the, lit up sky the sky and went back to sleep. And Mike, you said you were in bed by 10. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I had it where I do the morning show Friday and morning. And I did so the morning show with you. Yeah, I, I oh, no, but right. I, Early but Mike, I took a three hour nap in the afternoon. Oh, well, okay, so we there break you go. even. There we go. Anyway, no, couldn't stay up. So yesterday, of course, it was just warm and humid out there and the dry line, you know, kept it was flirting in the hill country. It stayed humid here in town pretty much all day long into the evening hours. Then the front moved through and boy, the bottom has dropped out. If you haven't stepped outside yet, get ready. Boy, bundle up this morning because it is definitely cold out there. We do have freeze warning in effect. This is where it has not hit freezing as of yet. So it's kind of a, it's a one time thing. Once areas hit freezing, they don't issue freeze warnings anymore. That's why it's not in effect for the hill country. But everywhere has a freeze warning this morning and we've got temperatures right now. We are below freezing for the first time officially here in town. 31 at Randolph, mid 20s in the hill country. Then yeah, I mean, first of all, look at the dew point temperatures. Of course, you've got this bone dry air out there. You can just about feel how dry the air is and it is windy. Winds are out of the north at about uh, 15, 20, 25 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. And so we have wind chills right now. Nine Kerrville, Lost Maples, 12 Burning Stage. It feels like 19 out there at the airport, and it's going to be staying fa fairly breezy throughout the day. It's going to be interesting to see what that top number does. This was yesterday's Mountain Cedar reading. It did drop down from the previous day. 8160 moles on the moderate side, and throughout the rest of today, it is going to be staying cold where it's going to be hard to get out of the 40s today. It's going to stay fairly breezy all day long, so wind chills will definitely be a factor. Good looking day, but boy, bundle up if you are heading outside. It's going to be even colder tomorrow morning. Details and another freeze warning, by the way. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. There are several developing stories working this morning. San Antonio police say they continue their investigation into a deadly crash on the city's northwest side involving three vehicles. That crash killed a woman at the scene and left five others injured. It happened near Culebra and Zerzamora just before 630 last night. Police say witnesses told them a red truck was speeding and possibly ran a red light before crashing into a truck and a Jeep. The woman that died was in a silver truck. The five others that were injured were taken to local hospitals. Sheriff's deputy is also investigating a fatal crash that happened on 281 South and 1604. It happened before 7 o'clock last night. Deputies say a truck and a car collided into each other. As they were waiting for help, a motorcyclist crashed into them. The motorcyclist was pronounced dead at the scene. Sections of 281 South at Rockport had to be closed as deputies cleared the scene. No word on the conditions of the drivers of the car and truck. Police are still working out the details of a stabbing on the city's west side around 3.30 Saturday at the intersection of Fredericksburg Road and West Woodlawn Avenue. Police say two men were seen fighting in the street. Someone called the authorities and when they arrived, a man was found with multiple stab wounds in the torso. At last check, he was in serious condition at University Hospital. Police did detain someone at the scene, but it is still unclear if they are the suspect. Now, the new year began with being shot for one man sitting in his vehicle. Now, police are searching for two suspects. The shooting happened around 3.30 a.m. in the parking lot of a bar near UTSA Boulevard. That's near Vance Jackson Road and I-10 on New Year's Day. The man was sitting in his vehicle when police say another vehicle pulled up slowly with the headlights off and started firing. He was hit several times and taken to University Hospital in critical condition. A baseball bat attack also has SAPD searching for a suspect 
who allegedly crashed into the vehicles before swinging that bat. Police say a couple driving on Navajo Street pulled over to look up directions just as the suspect was driving in the opposite direction. The suspect allegedly crashed into the couple's vehicle, according to police. They say while the man was looking at the damage to his vehicle, the suspect allegedly got out that bat and started hitting the man in the head. Another man tried to intervene, but he was also hit in the head. Both men were taken to University Hospital with severe head injuries. Happening now, cold temperatures are forcing people to find shelter, especially the homeless. Two area warming shelters have opened. Life Restored Church at 400 Arbor Place is opening its facilities today. But this was the scene last night as the church under the bridge opened its emergency warming shelter. Check-in started at around 7.30 and lasted an hour. The church was able to fit 40 sleeping bags in the main sanctuary. Normally, 90 sleeping bags would be available, but COVID protocols forced the church to spread out, reducing the number. And the plan is to open the emergency shelter. It were quickly made when executive director of church under the bridge, Diane Talbert, saw temperatures were expected in the 30s. We may not have as much of a response, but for the people that do know that they want to get out of the cold, we want to be available to them. The church under the bridge will be opening again as an emergency warming shelter. It is located at 724 Chestnut Street. Another shelter is opening today, Life Restored Church. And he'll just assign the beds all the way until they... Well, back here in Texas, the Texas Division for Emergency Management and the Texas Department of State Health Services has requested additional federal resources in the response to the COVID-19 surge. Additional resources would go towards setting up more testing locations, increased medical personnel and more antibody treatments. The state is running low on the antibody treatment that has proven to be the most effective against the surging Omicron variant. Almost a week ago, Texas agency officials announced that regional infusion centers in five of the state's largest cities have exhausted their supply of the treatment. 606 and the temperature we've all been waiting for 31 degrees. All right, go Spurs go. They're looking to start the new year with a win over the Pistons. A highlight straight ahead. And celebrations lit up the sky as the city welcomed 2022. A quick look is next. 31 degrees. We've officially hit that freezing temp. 607 this morning. Man, I had to put sweaters on my dogs this morning to walk them. Mike Osterhage back with we with what we can expect this Sunday. Happy New Year, San Antonio. It's officially the second day in 2022, and San Antonio, along with the world, rang into the year with all kinds of celebrations. Yeah, without fail, the sky's lit up with fireworks all around town. Just check it out. It's just a beautiful display of color and patterns. Our Sky 12 chopper was also able to capture, capture that celebration downtown from 6 until midnight. People crowded into Hemisphere and surrounding areas enjoy music, food, and a fireworks show that started at the stroke of midnight. And 20 minutes into the new year, listen to this. San Antonio welcomed the first baby of 2022. Amia Isad gave birth to Nadia, a beautiful, healthy baby girl at Methodist Hospital. She weighed a little more than 70 pounds. The first seven time parents pounds. Raised she didn't weigh oh, 70 that's pounds. That's right. That's seven pounds. Goodness. <laughs> well, the first time parents received several gifts from Methodist Hospital and say they are honored to be recognized by the city. That would be a big baby. Nadia, you Truly. are so precious. Oh my gosh. So, so cute. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to Nadia and her family. Great way to bring in the new year. Definitely. And uh, I don't know about you, but a lot of folks were lighting off fireworks. Oh, yeah. I walked outside in my neighborhood and, you know, we they say every year not to do it, but I still walk outside because I know people are going to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's always beautiful, and here's a great picture. Mr. McClellan, I haven't uh, seen a KSAC Connect picture from you in a while, but that is a great one. Love, love the fireworks there with the uh, Tower of the Americas and the Alamo Dome in the background. Thank you very much for that one. Boy, it is It's going to be a gorgeous sunrise this morning. We do still have a few low clouds well off to the east, but like I said, it's going to be beautiful out there. It is windy as expected. The winds shifted around when that uh, front moved on through late last night. Now about 15, 20, 25 mile per hour winds. And again, there are gusts to 31 in town, 25 Randolph and 30 up there around Canyon Lake. And so, of course, the wind chill. This 
this is what it feels like when you step outside 19. If you're heading to early church services this morning, definitely, definitely bundle up. It feels like nine right now. Kerrville eight at Lost Maples. Some of the coldest temperatures we've seen around here in a long, long time. And uh, there's not much of a warm up going on today. This particular computer model keeps us just in the upper seven or excuse me, upper 40s uh, later on this afternoon. I'm going for 50 for a high temperature, but again, that may be hard to do. And then we will be hitting freezing again by midnight tomorrow morning, and then it continues to drop down from there. And I think actually this one's a little bit on the conservative side, going a little bit colder than this as far as temperatures, but most everybody, everybody in our viewing area is going to be well down into the 20s by uh, tomorrow morning and then even colder than that. We won't have quite the strong wind, but it's just going to be plain old cold out there. So yeah, it's definitely going to be a hard freeze tonight, and we're going to be freezing for a fairly fairly long period of time. Like I said, here in town, it's going to be right around midnight and then up through about mid morning tomorrow. So good at least eight hours or more that we are going to be below freezing. So pets, plants, pipes, and don't forget about that. So dry air stays in place through Tomorrow we start to see a return of the humidity, not any huge surge of humidity. Then notice how it drops off again. We get another front that's going to be moving on through here, and that's going to be on Thursday. So as this front moved through, it did squeeze out a couple little sprinkly showers off to the east. Um, Probably a lot of that evaporated if you had one or two of those little sprinkles in some of our eastern counties. And then as you can see, there's a lot of winter weather and a lot of messy stuff going off going on off to the east of us. Look at this is the actual air temperature 34 degrees below zero right now at International Falls. I, obviously just a frigid Arctic air mass that's covering most of the country and then wind chill temperatures five below as nearby as Oklahoma City. 34 degrees below zero up there. So it's 60 or more degrees. Feels like it's 60, 65 degrees colder up there than it is here. 50 today uh, for the high temperature. That's it. So normal high temperatures in the low to mid 60s. So we're going to be about 15 degrees below normal. And then tomorrow we get down to 25 degrees. So freeze warning this morning is in effect up until 10 o'clock. Then the freeze warning goes into effect again at midnight up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll make it up to 53 tomorrow. It's going to be close to freezing here in town Tuesday morning and uh, maybe not quite. Then we are going to be getting a little bit milder. Low temperature of 48 on Wednesday. Another cold front comes on through here and it looks like we're going to be hitting freezing again. Then by Friday morning, with highs only in the low 50s. So we try to rebound somewhat. We get above normal by Wednesday, but then another big front moves on through here. So again, it's cold out there, but especially then for tonight, the long period of freezing, a, a good okay. at least eight hours here in town, longer in parts of the hill country will be below freezing. Wow, so I covered, I brought all my plants in last night and then covered what I could. Yeah. Keep them basically covered. Might as well. Yeah. Which is a good reminder, the three piece. Pets, plants, and pipes. Yes, indeed. 615, 31 degrees outside. All right, Winnie the Pooh may no longer be an exclusive character to Walt Disney. We're going to tell you why. The Spurs take their game with Detroit down to the wire. They, they, they did pull off the win. Sports is next. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, three, one, four, fireball four, daily four, six, eight, five, nine, fireball two. And cash five is 11, 8, 11, 15, 18, 29, and Texas lotto one, 16, 19, 39, 42, and 46. Let's take a look at the Powerball. This was a 500 million. It's a big jackpot. I don't know if anyone won. 6, 12. No one won, according to Mike. Are you luck? 6, 12, 39, 48, 50, Powerball seven, power play two. The Spurs trying to kick off the new year on the right foot with a win last night on the road, but they take the court without Lonnie Walker the fourth and Doug McDermott, who are both out due to COVID protocols, and without DeJounte Murray, who remains out to recondition. The Silver and Black taking on the Detroit Pistons. Derek White feeds Brian Forbes, who gets the three-pointer, putting the Spurs up to 14 to 9. A few minutes later, Trey Jones, he's in the right place to get the rebound and puts it in. In the second quarter, Spurs run the pick and roll. Devin Vassell to Potel, who makes Makes the dunk. San Antonio opens their largest lead at 37 to 23, and they don't let up the Spurs go into halftime 59 to 52. But in the third quarter, Pistons decide to make the game 
tight. Joshua Primo gets the ball to drop, but Detroit pulls ahead. Sadiq Bay drives baseline for the bucket and draw the foul, and the Pistons go up 73 to 71, and they go into the last quarter with the lead. But Bryn Forbes catches fire. He ends up with a three, and the Spurs tied up 101, and he does it again. He has three three pointers, but the game is tied at 105. San Antonio has a chance to win at the buzzer, but Keldon Johnson's shot doesn't go in and the game goes into overtime. Now the Pistons scored the first four points, but here come the Spurs. Forbes scores again, bringing the Spurs within a point and then Patel in the line gets the bucket. Spurs take the lead 112 to 111 lead in the last few seconds in overtime. May gets the ball, drills a triple over Patel and Keldon and the Detroit goes up with less than two seconds on the clock for the Spurs before the Spurs go broke. Keldon Johnson is wide open at the buzzer, but it's no good. Spurs lose by one in overtime, 117 to 116. They deserve credit. You know, we got up, I think, by about 17, and uh, they kept playing, kept playing, got ahead of us by about seven or so, and uh, we dug down deep, got back in it, had our chances, uh, but in the end, you know, it didn't work out. The Spurs are still on the road. Their next game is in Toronto against the Raptors. Tip-off is Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Temperatures uh, 31 degrees, 621. All right. And Winnie the Pooh might be no longer associated <laughs> just with Disney. We'll explain when we come back. In the start of the new year, has President Biden looking for a new chairspin, a chairperson of the FDIC? We're talking about Jelena McWilliams, the chair of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, submitted her resignation on Friday. She was the last remaining Republican on the five-member board. McWilliams was appointed to that position by former President Donald Trump. Just last month, in a Wall Street Journal op-ed, McWilliams accused Democrats of a hostile takeover. Her resignation will be effective February 4th. The FDIC says is responsible for insurance ensuring deposits for U.S. banks. And 2022 will possibly see other companies besides Disney using the image of Winnie the Pooh. The copyright protection for Winnie the Pooh expires this year. Disney has made billions from author A.A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh books since the company acquired the rights back in 1961. While others can use the characters after the copyright expires, they just can't use Disney's trademarks. They will have to make their own versions. Disney could try to extend the copyright again, but legal experts think it might be a long shot. Of greater concern, Disney may also lose a copyright for Steamboat Willie two years from now. If you didn't know, Steamboat, Steamboat Willie is the earliest version of Mickey Mouse. Well, it looks like Winnie the Pooh is a free agent now. I know. He's out and about. <laughs> he sure is. Well, 629, 31 degrees. A whistleblower claims Facebook is harming young girls' body images just ahead. What you can do to protect your teens. And a fire sends family into cold looking for safety early this morning. What firefighters found when they arrived at the scene. Coming up next. Good morning, Buenos Dias. It's 6.30 on Sunday, January 2nd. It's really chilly outside. Time it, to get the coat. I know. Such a different way to start 2022 after what we've been used to. I went to the zoo yesterday afternoon. One, it was packed, but <laughs> still, it was, the zoo's so big, you're able to, you know, walk around I mean, and not just feel. like that, we went from summer to winter. I know. Winter. Like, a lot of the animals are out enjoying it. Those poor animals would be like, <laughs> what is going on? 31 degrees, Mike. And you were probably in shorts and flip-flops yesterday, too, oh, right? Oh, I was yeah. wearing a sleeveless dress. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We, it's one extreme to the other. We hit a high temperature yesterday of 79 and we're now down to 31. So, you know, basically we've dropped 50 degrees since late yesterday. And uh, no, and Jonathan, I beg to differ with your description. It's not really chilly. It's cold. It's just <laughs> burry. It's freezing outside. Literally 31 and uh, that dew point, that bottom number 18 bone dry air. You can kind of feel how dry the air is. And also it is windy out there. That is making wind chills numbers that you're going to not want to see 50 for a high temperature today. That's all we're going to be able to muster. If indeed we do get up to 50, it's going to be a gorgeous day today. The aquifer yesterday went up two tenths of a foot and the allergens. Now mountain cedar really dropped down a lot from the previous day's reading and about a th almost a third of what it was the previous day. If memory serves me correctly, it's going to be interesting to see what the count is later on today with the winds that we've had overnight and uh, also tomorrow with the windy conditions throughout the day today. Anyway, right now, 
now. We do have a freeze warning in effect, and this is for the areas that have not had widespread freezing temperatures up to this point. So even though a freeze warning is in effect again for tomorrow morning, uh, for a lot of these counties won't be included in that just because we have actually hit freezing. Wind, as I was talking about, very strong out of the north of 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. Gust to 31 here in town, 32 in Kerrville. Wind chill temperatures down to 7 is what it feels like in Kerrville. 13 burning stage, 19 here in town. Valverde feels like 17 degrees. Wind chills are definitely going to be something we're going to be dealing with throughout most of the day. So freezing temperatures this morning, sunny, cold, windy. Yeah, good looking day, but boy, bundle up with those winds because that's just going to shove that cold air right down the back of your neck. Even colder tomorrow morning, we're looking at, it won't be as windy, but we're looking at actual air temperatures getting down to about the mid 20s here in town. We're going to be below freezing for a good stretch of time starting at about midnight up through mid morning tomorrow. So pets, plants and pipes tonight, definitely a lot of sun Sunshine, though, and we'll get up into the low 50s. Then a slight warm up midweek. Another pretty good cold fronts coming through on Thursday. Will we hit freezing again? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. And as parents get ready to send their kids back to school, concerns as coronavirus cases continue to spread, the Omicron variant fueling the surge. The warning from doctors, plus the positive news from overseas about the variant. ABC's Karina Mitchell is tracking the story from New York. Tonight, as Omicron spreads across the country, the nation's top health officials urging Americans to get vaccinated and boosted. Cases of the new variant now confirmed in at least 17 states. We're following them closely, and we are every day hearing about more and more probable cases, so that number is likely to rise. A new preliminary study raising the possibility that Omicron may have borrowed genetic material from the common cold, thus making it more infectious. That study yet to be peer reviewed. But we really got to be careful before we make any determinations. But thus far, the signals are a bit encouraging regarding the severity. And that's what one of the first known Americans to contract Omicron is saying tonight. 30 year old Peter McKinn telling The New York Times that he attended this anime convention in New York City, along with more than 53,000 people. After flying home to Minneapolis, McGinn telling the paper he felt unusually tired, and after learning a friend from the convention caught COVID, he got tested. McGinn telling the Times, quote, one guy had a bad day, but for the most part, mild symptoms for everyone. Omicron spread, sending demand for the vaccine surging to the highest level in seven months. Almost six million people reportedly receiving a shot since Friday. More than half of those were boosters. Even with a new variant, like Omicron, if you get boosted, you're going to get your level up way up. In Louisiana, thousands now being tested after a COVID-19 outbreak on a week-long international cruise. At least 10 confirmed cases on the Norwegian breakaway returning to New Orleans today. The cruise line stating in part, in addition to requiring that 100% of guests and crew are fully vaccinated, we have implemented quarantine, isolation, and contact tracing procedures. Starting Monday, anyone coming into the U.S. must show proof of a negative COVID-19 test 24 hours before boarding their flight, and that is regardless of citizenship or vaccination status. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. A morning house fire on the west side forces a family to flee into the cold for safety. The fire broke out in 300 block of Sylvia Avenue around 140 this morning. Fire crews arrived to flames and heavy smoke pouring from the home. Firefighters had to work quickly to put out the fire before high winds spread those flames. Everyone inside the home was able to make it out safely. No injuries were reported. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And police officers are investigating after a man is found with several cuts to his hands and face. He was discovered just before midnight in the 300 block of Dolores Street. Police say their initial investigation leads them to believe the cutting did not happen where the man was found. Authorities are trying to determine exactly where he was cut. They're also trying to figure out how the victim ended up at a home belonging to family members on Dolores Street. He was transported to the hospital in stable condition. Police have no information on a possible suspect. In your morning headlines, a New York police officer is alive after being shot in the head on New Year's outside of a police station. The officer had just finished a New Year's Eve shift and was resting before his next tour. He woke up to pain on the side of his head and noticed his window was shattered. 
An on-duty sergeant saw the officer getting out of the car and that his head was bleeding. He was rushed to the hospital. Officers say they didn't hear gunshots, but they're canvassing the area for evidence that could lead to the shooter. The NYPD is offering a $10,000 reward for information. And three missing people, three people are still being looked for and feared dead after Thursday's devastating, devastating wildfire. That's according to Colorado authorities. Cadaver dogs are being brought into the area today to assist to search for those bodies. Two of those residents that have not been found were in Superior, and the third is from an unco unincorporated area of Boulder County. The homes of, the, of those residents that haven't been found were destroyed by fire and are now buried under eight inches of snow. The Boulder County Sheriff says at least 991 area homes were lost in the blaze, but he says considering the magnitude of the wildfires, they are fortunate it wasn't worse. I have suspected we would have loss of life just based on the size of this fire and the speed and the ferocity. I'm, I think it's miraculous that if it is three, it was three and not a hundred or hundreds. So I'm, I'm grateful for that, but I'm also extremely sorry for those families. Meanwhile, the investigation and the cause of the fires continues. There has been speculation about downed power lines. A search warrant has been executed at a property with a potential connection to the fire. And we do know that Betty White, unfortunately, unfortunately. she died at the age of 99. Just before, I mean, she was about to be 100. Yeah. Right? So, so let's take a look important. at her life. ABC has that package. Hi, Rose. How's it going? Hi, Blitch. <laughs> God, I hate morning people. <laughs> Betty White knew how to get a laugh as the sweet, ditzy Rose Nyland on the 1980 sitcom The Golden Girls and as the devious, happy homemaker on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. I will see to it that your little dinner party will become a feast to remember. But, Sue Ann, now if you'll excuse me, I have to rake someone's tail over the coals. She won two Emmys for playing the caddy Sue Ann Nivens, seven in all during a career that spanned nearly six decades. Alvin. Wait a minute. Turn off the teeth, Elizabeth. She produced her first sitcom, Life with Elizabeth, one of the few women in the early 1950s to wield such control. White never looked back. It's time to say hello again. White had her own talk show, appeared in sitcoms, and was a frequent guest star on popular series like Boston Legal. Use this. It has special powers. Oh. She caught the eye of a new generation in 2009's The Proposal with Sandra Bullock, okay. and new authors came in. You're playing like Betty White out there. That's not what your girlfriend said. Oh, this ad was the talk of the 2010 Super Bowl. She got a new television series hot in Cleveland, and then came Saturday Night Live, a Facebook campaign that made her the oldest person to host the show. I'm 88 and a half years old. Here for a number of reasons. <laughs> but as good as she was at it, acting was simply a way to finance her passion animals. My life is divided in two halves show business and animal business. Two things I love the most, but I have to stay in show business to pay for my animal business. Betty White truly was TV's Golden Girl. People say I look like Wilma Flintstone. <laughs> Not when she was on the air, more the way she looks today. Brandy Hit, ABC News, Los Angeles. Oh, oh may she's she, truly going to be missed. Yeah, may she rest in peace. I feel like if you couldn't agree on anything, everyone agreed that they loved Betty White. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. Yeah. All right, 640 and 31 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Cowboys have a true leader in their quarterback. What teammates asked Dak to take over? And keeping your teenagers safe as they connect on social media, we have share we have some information on how to keep your kids guarded for parents. Let's take a look, live look outside. 31 degrees. We reached those freezing temperatures at 6:40 this morning. Hey guys, if you're still inside, make sure that you brought you bring your pets inside, cover your pipes or plants. Mike has a forecast when we come back.
Well, social media has connected the world, but some say it may be doing more harm than good, especially for our children. And according to whistleblower released research, Instagram makes body image issues worse for one in three teenage girls. And among teenagers who reported suicidal thoughts, 6% of users traced the desire to kill themselves back to Instagram. Now, Facebook's own research reveals when young women see content involving eating disorders, they become depressed, and it makes them use Instagram even more, continuing that cycle. So what can parents do to protect their teens? Erica Hernandez has some ways that may help. TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the list goes on and on for ways kids can connect. I can sit there on, like, on TikTok just watching videos for hours, just laughing. Yeah. We're so negative today and bring like other people down. A new study published in the Lancet Child and Adolescent Health suggests social media harms girls more than boys, leading to cyberbullying, sleep problems, and less exercise. So what can parents do? First, rather than giving your kid a smartphone and let them download multiple apps, start by letting your child text only with a best friend or family member. Once your child proves they're responsible online, choose one platform and one time period, such as Instagram, for 30 minutes a day. You can set that limit via your phone. On Apple, look for the family sharing settings, and on Android, you can use an app called Family Link. When the time is up, the app on your child's phone will no longer be accessible. To prevent unwanted downloads, there's also an ask to buy setting on Apple phones that will send a request to the parent. Also, remove phones and tablets from the bedroom at night. Most importantly for kids and adults, it's important to understand that the more we pay attention to our phones, the less we're investing in the rest of our lives. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Also, help your teen curate their feed. A recent study found that fewer than half the parents regularly discuss content with their teenager. But the experts said it's helpful to talk about who they are following and how these accounts make them feel. All right, it's 31 degrees outside, Jonathan. I know, I know. You have your electric blankets plugged in already. Oh, yeah. You can buy some of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I left my, uh, my dogs wrapped in the electric so blankets on low, of course. <laughs> they were not happy this morning, Mike, especially when I made them go outside. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not wrapped in an electric blanket. You know what? Today. Right now. <laughs> I might have some warm boots on that you she can't does. see. <laughs> Are those house slippers or boots? Okay, <laughs> let's let's not talk about let's not debate on that. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea. I mean, it's just like warm and comfy clothes and wrap up in a blanket and throw it back over your head this morning. I love this picture and I was trying to figure out where this is. That does not look anybody any ideas? Is that Woodlawn? Mm. Hmm. Is it? Is that Ralph? Okay. Okay. We're getting, we're getting, Thank a, you, that, Ralph. that's Woodlawn. It's a great shot. I love that. Thank you very much. And somebody went for a nice peaceful walk and like Sarah did out at the zoo is probably in shorts and flip flops yesterday. And, and it's not what you want to wear today. If you're out taking a walk, look at the beautiful sunrise. Absolutely gorgeous this morning. Great way to start the day, but wow, uh, these winds out there. Yeah, 31 degrees, but we've got winds that are gusting. 31 miles per hour, uh, 32 up there in Kerrville. So, of course, we have wind chills right now to deal with. 19 in town, 18 Balverde, 7. Kind of rare when we see single digit wind chills, and uh, that's definitely the case out there in portions of the hill country. So, the dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Yesterday, dew points were very high, and that's why it was kind of humid throughout most of the day. And these dew points have dropped down 50, almost 55 degrees. We don't usually see this big of a drop in uh, dew point temperatures in such a short period of time, but obviously that's the case with that front that moved on through. So yesterday we did hit 79 in town, 83 Pleasanton, 94 in Catula, as well as Laredo, and then we've dropped down to 31 degrees. So between the high yesterday and the current temperature, we've dropped about 50, uh, in some cases almost to 55 degrees, and then we're not going to be rebounding all that much today, only up to 50 here in town, mid 50s along the, uh, the Rio Grande Valley, and not even getting out of the, it may be hard to get out of the 30s in portions of the hill country, and it'll be tough to hit even 50 here in town later on this afternoon. And again, I mean, just kind of the gee whiz, most all of the country is well below freezing as of right now. And then you've got 34 degrees below zero, the actual air temperature, not even the wind chill. I mean, 
There's not any wind up there as of right now, but a wind chills down to five below at Oklahoma City, Dallas. It feels like two as of right now and uh, throughout the rest of the week. Yes, things are going to start to modify a little bit. Here's the front that moved on through. We get this huge blast of cold air coming down in here. This will tend to modify, although the coldest air is going to be once it settles in here and we don't have as much of a breeze tonight, the heavier, colder air is going to be allowed to sink down to the surface. That's why it's going to be even colder tomorrow morning down into the mid 20s. Then we'll start to modify a little bit going into the middle portion of the week. Then we get another this nice northwesterly flow. Another front's going to move on through here. So we rebound and then another shot at some freezing temperatures by the end of the week and then things will modify just a little bit. And as far as rain chances, maybe a sprinkle on Saturday. I don't even have it in the long range forecast. Not that great of a chance. 44 degrees today at noon, so we'll just make it up to about the normal low temperature by noon. Still windy all day long and then a high temperature up to 50 today. So almost uh, 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Again, freeze warnings in effect till 10 o'clock this morning, as well as tomorrow goes into effect at midnight up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And we're going to only make it up to 53 tomorrow and still close to freezing Tuesday morning up to 67 degrees. We'll Top off in the mid 70s Wednesday. That next front moves through here. And by the way, Thursday, of course, is the 12th day of Christmas. So you can keep your decorations up till then. And then uh, that next front moves through. So we're going to be down right around freezing again by Friday morning. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. You know, and I was just thinking, Sarah, I'm so excited about this cold front, but I just remind, remembered I'm going to be outside with yeah. Steven. Enjoy, enjoy live reporting. <laughs> enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. 650, 30 degrees outside. The Cowboys look to their quarterback to get them fired up before they take the field. What else his teammates look for him to do? Coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Despite questions about some of his performances, Dak Prescott has proven his ability to lead his teammates even in the Cowboys' pregame huddles. Jalen Smith used to be in charge of the speeches until he got cut, and it's obvious Dak is able to fire up Ezekiel Elliott, but his teammates asked him to take over the pregame huddles. Some of the guys just told me I needed to do it, and so um, as a leader, when, when another leader or somebody else asks you to do something, you don't hesitate, and so um, when, when the guys were being receptive to it and that's what they wanted, um, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me uh, to take it over, and at that point, it's, it's something easy for me to, to, to do and something that I just get another chance to talk to the guys and talk to the defense and special teams, guys that I may not talk to as much just during the week with the preparation, just kind of let them know how I feel and um, let them know that who they're going to war with and that we're all in this together. Cowboys take on the Arizona Cardinals later today at the AT&T Center. Kickoff is at 3.25 p.m. Well, 635, 655, 30 degrees. We dropped the digit. We did. <laughs> we'll be right back. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio firefighters are investigating a house fire on the city's west side. The fire broke out around 140 this morning, the 300 block of Sylvia Avenue. Firefighters moved quickly to put out the fire before the high winds could spread those flames. Everyone inside the home was able to make it out safely. No injuries were reported. And another warming shelter opens today for those looking to get out of the cold. Life Restored Church at 400 Arbor Place is opening its facility today. The church under the bridge already opened its emergency warming shelter for the homeless last night. The church staffers was able to fit 40 sleeping bags in the main sanctuary. This church is located at 724 Chestnut Street. Hey, good morning, I'm Janae Norman. Coming up here on GMA, travel troubles. Millions face major disruptions as they return home from the holidays. COVID-19 slamming airline staff and winter weather contributing to cancellations. Where the storm is headed now. Plus, the U.S. again reaching a record number of new COVID infections. The Omicron variant fueling the surge in cases and the number of children hospitalized soaring. How schools are dealing with the spike in cases. And dramatic rescue. More than 20 people trapped in a tram in New Mexico. Their wait for help in frigid temperatures. That is all coming up here on GMA.
It is cold and it's actually gotten colder. Beautiful start this morning, but we are now down to 29 here in town. 25 Bernie stage and 23 is out there in portions of the hill country. It is very windy and so wind chill temperatures are now down to 18 in town. 15 is what it feels like. It ran off of freeze warning in effect till 10 o'clock and then again it goes back into effect at midnight up until 10 o'clock tomorrow. We're going to have a high today of only 50 and then tomorrow morning we get down to 25 degrees here in town. Bit of a warm up by midweek and then another pretty good front's coming through here by Thursday. Ooh, thank yeah. you very much, Mike. All right, we'll be back here at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We begin with late breaking news, a shooting southeast of downtown. Officers were called out to the 400 block of Montrose around 630 this morning. That's near South New Braunfels Avenue. So right now we don't have much information, but we do know that San Antonio Police Chief William McManus is at the scene. And so we're waiting to get an update from him. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available. Good morning. It's eight o'clock on Sunday, January 2nd. Good morning. Happy first, second day or second first, day. Second of the new day. Year. And first, this is how we day. bring it in. You know, it's funny. We say we feel like it's the first day of the new year because I think everyone was off yesterday enjoying. Right. I went, Sleeping in. I went to resetting. the zoo. Mike, it was what, 80 degrees here in San Antonio? 79 to be exact. Yeah. Wow. And now. We have dropped down even further. It is down to 27 degrees Urgh. here in town. It's a beautiful start this morning. We've got lots of clear skies out there. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't let that fool you, though, because, again, look at these temperatures. We are at 27 here in town, 25 Ball Verde, 21 right now. Lost Maples Comfort's at 22 degrees. And just about, well, everybody on that map is at freezing or below. And then we still have a very good wind out there. Winds about 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. Wind chill temperature. It is 14 in town. Same thing. Randolph 13 ball Verde 7 Kerrville 6 is what it feels like right now at Los Maples 15 in Hondo and the wind is definitely going to be an issue throughout the, the course of the day. Freeze warnings remain in effect for the next couple of hours up until 10 o'clock and that's also the situation tomorrow. This goes back into effect at midnight and up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and that's going to be for the areas that don't hit widespread freezing tonight. Like for instance, Bear County it's not going to be in the freeze warning tomorrow because we've already hit freezing. It's for the first time you hit freezing widespread. 44 degrees today at noon, 50 high temperature today. It's still going to be windy all day long. Again, we hit uh, even colder temperatures tomorrow morning. A little bit of a warm up, another front later on in the week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. Warming centers have opened up for people who don't have anywhere to go during these cold days and nights. An emergency warming shelter for the homeless opened at the church under the bridge last night. The church was able to fit 40 sleeping bags in the main sanctuary. Normally, that number is 90, but with COVID-19 protocols, it forced the church to spread out. The plans to open the emergency shelter were made quickly when executive director of Church Under the Bridge, Diane Talbot, saw temperatures were expected to drop. She knew it was necessary. We may not have as much of a response, but for the people that do know that they want to get out of the cold, we want to be available to them. The church under the bridge will be opening again today as an emergency warming shelter. They're located at 724 Chestnut Street. That's near the Hay Street Bridge. Another shelter opening today is the Life Restored Church. They're located at 400 Arbor Place, west of I-10 and North Frio Street. New this morning, the strong winds early this morning helped spread the flames at a house fire on the city's west side. Firefighters received the call just after 1.30 uh, this morning. Heavy smoke and fire was coming from a house on Sylvia Avenue. That's south of San Fernando Cemetery between Castroville Road and Highway 90. Everyone inside the home was able to get out safely. and No one was injured. The cause of the fire is unknown. Other top stories this morning, a woman is dead and five others injured after a three vehicle crash on the city's northwest side last night. The crash happened just after 630 near Culebra in Zerzamora. Witnesses told police they saw a red truck speeding and possibly run a red light before crashing into a silver truck and a Jeep. A woman in the silver truck died at the scene. She has yet to be identified from the three vehicles. Four people were taken to University Hospital and one person has been taken to Bamsey.
And Bear County Sheriff's deputies at the scene of a fatal crash yesterday evening on 281 South and 1604. It happened around 645 p.m. yesterday. Information is limited, but we know it involved a truck, car and motorcycle. Deputies say the truck and car crashed into each other, and while they were waiting for help, the motorcyclist crashed into them. The motorcyclist was pronounced dead at the scene. It is unclear if the other drivers were injured or not. A family is starting the new year mourning the loss of their loved one, 28 year old Valentin Gonzalez. He was shot and killed at his apartment complex off of Warsbach Road on Thursday. His loved one spoke to John Paul Barajas about what happened and how they'll be remembering him. An argument turning into a fatal shooting left 28 year old Valentin Gonzalez dead. It all taking place at an apartment complex on Wurzbach near Babcock Road on December 30th. He leaves behind eight kids, his wife and his mother, who spoke to us through her pain. I love you, baby. I love you and I miss you so much. I can't see if I could go without you. According to police, 18 year old Jordan Eden allegedly shot Gonzalez, went on the run and then turned himself in later that day. Police are still investigating the case, but according to Gonzalez's wife, the entire argument started because Eaton's dog came towards them and they simply pet it. Says that you can't touch my dog. I don't with you. I don't with any of you. Brittany Gonzalez adds after going back and forth, Eden flashed his gun. They tried to ignore him, but the dog came back and that's when he allegedly started shooting. He shoots at me two inches from my face and he goes and tuggles him to the ground. He cocks the gun and shoots. He falls to the ground. And he looks at me and says, I love you, mama. Gonzalez was rushed to the hospital, later dying from his injuries. His brother, Timothy, got the news, but wasn't able to make it to say goodbye. I rushed over here, man. I don't even live in town. I live out of town, man. I drove as fast as I could. The traffic was hell. I couldn't get here in time. I'm sorry, brother. The entire Gonzalez family in tears. One of Valentin's young stepdaughters also asking if she could speak with us. It's really hard for me to sleep because I miss him. And I want to tell you, Daddy, I really love you and I miss you. And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. Other top stories. Search efforts are continuing into the new year for three-year-old Lena Kill. Tomorrow will mark two weeks since the little girl was last seen. Her last known location was at the apartment complex where she lived with her parents on Fredericksburg Road near Warsbach. That was back on December 20th. San Antonio police and FBI officials have been working day and night to find Lena. They say they don't have any information that someone took her, so they are still treating this as a missing persons case, not an abduction. She was last seen wearing a black jacket, red dress and black shoes. Anyone with information about her disappearance is asked to call SAPD's missing person unit. That number on the bottom of your screen right now, 210-207-7660. Now to a traffic alert to be aware of if you're going to be driving in the Bernie area along I-10 tomorrow. Text not will have part of the access road closed in order to construct a new eastbound frontage road approaching US 87. Eastbound traffic on the access road near Manger Springs will be detoured onto I-10 using the new entrance ramp and then return to the access road using exit 543, the scenic loop exit. This closure will begin tomorrow at 9 a.m. The whole project is estimated to be finished by spring. 23 new state laws are now in effect. The new laws range from a slight change, the exemption on homestead taxes for disabled veterans to a requirement on large cities to hold an election before reducing or reallocating funding for law enforcement agencies. You can read more about these new laws right now on KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, Kentucky hit by severe weather again less than a month after those deadly tornadoes. The governor of Kentucky declaring a state of emergency after a powerful storm caused flash floods, power outages and property damage, including from a possible tornado yesterday. There were no immediate reports of any injuries or deaths. Now, 808, 27 degrees. It's only getting colder by the moment. Oh my gosh, Burr. All right, still ahead on GMSA, a look back at Hollywood's beloved Betty White's career and life after her passing at the age of 99. And as we remember a life lost, we welcome new life in the new year. Coming up after the break, meet the first baby born in 2022 here in San Antonio. Like Jonathan said, it's just getting colder. That temperature just keeps dropping this morning. 
We are 27 degrees. Can you guys believe it? We were almost at 80 yesterday here in the Alamo City. Mike is in for Sarah this Sunday morning. He'll have her forecast when we come back. We'll say hello to the first baby born in the new year here in San Antonio. This is so I draw with my mouth. I've got like a short pencil. We might not have a lot of Buffalo Bills here right now, but that's right now we're looking at the story of this young boy who uh, has a rare disorder and is able to accomplish just a tremendous amount of things there. 11-year-old Grayson has a rare disorder that prevents him from using his arms or legs, but that doesn't stop him from living a full life, including dreams of even playing football someday. It changed my life. It really did. I mean, like, I was like, wow. And after Grayson's teacher shared his artwork on Facebook, Bills fans went crazy for it. And now, thanks to generous donations, the young fan is heading to today's game against the Falcons. Gosh, I'm going to be in the Bud Light Club on Sunday, and I hope to meet you there. Oh, that's there such a it. sweet story. <laughs> Definitely. Well, All right, it's 824 and 27 degrees. It's still ahead on JMSA. COVID cases continuing to rise, and students get ready to head back to school. Tomorrow we'll have the latest coming up. And a lot of questions still unanswered after a man shows up to a relative's home with cuts on him. What we've learned so far about the case that's coming up after the break. But before we go, go to break, we want to go back to that late breaking news, a shooting southeast of downtown. Two people are dead and two others are injured. Officers were called out to the 400 block of Montrose around 630 this morning. That's near South New, uh, South New Braunfels Avenue. Right now, investigators have a lot of information to sort through, but Police Chief William McManus said he believes this shooting was drug related. He says there are two scenes they are processing. The two people killed were a man and a woman believed to be in their 20s. Their identities have not been released. Another man and woman were also injured. Officers trying to talk to them to get more information will continue to follow this story and bring you the latest on air and online at KSAT.com. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. And I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, January 2nd. Happy second day of 2022. And what a way to start it. <laughs> what a way to start it. It's exactly how I wanted it, but I think I'm starting to take it back. It's yeah. really, really cold. No, it's really cold. too, too cold. Mike, 27 degrees. Yeah. This is wild. Mm -hmm. We have dropped down 50 degrees from the high temperature yesterday. More than, yeah, and that doesn't even take into account the uh, the wind chill as of right now. But yeah, we are down to uh, 27. Wind is out of the northwest. These are sustained winds. It's gusting on top of that, 20 miles per hour. And the dew points, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere is at 14, the dew point temperature, which is about 50 to 55 degrees lower than what it was. It was very humid yesterday, of course, and we're only going to make it up into uh, the upper 40s. Maybe we hit 50 later on this afternoon. As far as the allergens, the the updated count has not come out yet. Uh, the aquifer, this was yesterday's reading, went up two tenths of a foot, and uh, mountain cedar had dropped down significantly from Friday's numbers down to 8,000, still on the high side. But of course, that was taken before the front moved on through here. It's been very, very windy overnight, so that may be shaking up those mountain cedar trees. As far as the wind gusts around there, about 30 miles per hour, 25, 30, 30 miles per hour, and um, Wind chill temperatures, 8 in Kerrville, 14 in town, 13 right now, Balverde and New Braunfels. Freeze warning is in effect till 10 o'clock this morning and then goes back into effect at midnight up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And like I said, Mountain Cedar is on the high side. It's freezing this morning. That kind of says it all. Sunny, cold, windy all day long, so wind chills will definitely be a factor all day long. And then even colder tomorrow morning, mid-20s, and then we'll make it up to the low 50s in the afternoon. We'll warm up a little bit toward midweek, then another cold front moves through here on Thursday. And, of course, Thursday, and somebody had questioned why I have a Christmas tree there on Thursday that has nothing to do with any sort of brush pickup or anything like that, Christmas tree pickup. That is the, the 12th day of Christmas, the Epiphany. So that's why I had put that there on the uh extended forecast. So any more fronts after the one Thursday? We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah.
Thank you, Mike. And sticking with that cold weather, Mike was just talking about District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo is asking for coat donations for children in need at the Rory Mas Youth Alternatives and People of Corazon Ministries. You can drop off new or gently used coats from now through Friday at any of these five locations that are on your screen right now. The sizes they need range from children small to adult double, uh, double extra large. And you this morning, a man shows up to a family member's home with cuts to his face and hands, and now police are trying to figure out what happened to him. Officers were called to a house on Dolores Street near Hortensia Avenue on the west side around midnight. They found the injured man, and he was taken to the hospital for treatment. In their initial investigation, police don't believe the cutting happened at the home on Dolores Street. Right now, they're trying to figure out where the attack happened and who is responsible. Top stories this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a stabbing attack where one person was sent to the hospital. This incident happened around 3.30 yesterday afternoon at the intersection of Fredericksburg Road and West Woodlawn Avenue. Witnesses told police two men were seen fighting in the street, so they called 911. By the time officers arrived, a man was found with multiple stab wounds to the torso. He was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Police did detain someone at the scene, but it is unclear if they are the suspect. And police are searching for two suspects who allegedly opened fire at a vehicle with still a person inside. The shooting happened around 3.30 yesterday morning in the parking lot of a bar on UTSA Boulevard near Vance Jackson Road in I-10. Police say the man was sitting in the vehicle when another vehicle pulled up slowly with the headlights off and started shooting. The man inside was hit several times and taken to University Hospital in critical condition. No other injuries were reported. And to the pandemic now and the surge in Omicron infections across the country as so many parents get to set their kids back to school tomorrow after the holiday break. ABC's Phil Lipoff has the latest from New York. This morning, COVID-19 outbreaks exploding across the country. Just this week, the U.S. reporting more than a record 2.2 million infections. At least 11 states sounding the alarm, calling on the National Guard to help with the Omicron-fueled surge in cases. Texas Governor Greg Abbott requesting more COVID testing sites and medical personnel as the state sees a spike in hospitalizations. In Michigan, hospitals are overwhelmed. Today is not one of the better days. There are a lot of patients on ventilators, long wait times in our emergency department. Patients waiting hours for ICU beds to open up. They're sicker. They're younger. A lot of them don't have any pre-existing conditions, um, and it's scary. We have so many patients in the ICU right now that we are all pulling extra shifts and coming in extra days to work. As pediatric hospital admissions from COVID climbed to an all-time high, the FDA could authorize boosters for 12 to 15-year-olds as soon as possible, offering extra protection for school-age kids. Some school districts bracing for a potential spike in cases as students return to school this week. I think as a parent, we're kind of having this here we go again kind of moment with this new variant. I think it's just better to be safe than sorry and keep the masks on. A rise in cases prompting schools in Atlanta and a district outside of New York City to welcome students back online. Many schools around New Jersey also going to remote learning. In California, the Castro Valley Unified School District passing out COVID testing kits to parents so that all students can test before classes start on Monday. We want to make sure that everyone um, takes a test before they come to school and so that if someone is symptomatic that they can quarantine safely and we can keep the rest of the school community safe. All over the U.S., people waiting for testing in long lines. I've seen wait times up to three hours. This isn't just testing to be able to travel and be able to see family anymore. Now it's becoming testing in need because people are becoming infectious. Many Americans trying to get their hands on hard to find rapid test kits. In Connecticut, Governor Ned Lamont addressing the low supply and announcing a new shipment will be distributed. We have 426,000 rapid tests right here and more to come. And this morning, a federal judge in Louisiana ruled that the Biden administration overstepped Congress when it required all teachers in the federally funded Head Start program be vaccinated by January 31st. That same ruling also said the government cannot require kids in that program two and older to wear masks indoors. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. And the FDA is expected to authorize booster shots for 12 to 15 year olds this week, possibly as soon as tomorrow. The CDC says its authorization would follow quickly.
New morning headlines. President Joe Biden will speak with the president of Ukraine today regarding tensions in Russia. The call comes several days after President Biden urged Russian President Vladimir Putin to ease the military crisis on Ukraine's border. The president said he made it clear in his call with Putin there will be, quote, heavy price to pay if Russia were to invade Ukraine. A White House official says his call with Ukraine's president, Biden plans to reaffirm U.S. support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Officials in Colorado say nearly 1,000 homes and other structures were destroyed after that huge wildfire northwest of Denver. Three people have still not been seen. Investigators are still trying to find the cause of the fire that started off Thursday. The wildfire blackened entire neighborhoods in the area between Denver and Boulder, Colorado. And federal officials are warning of the threats on the upcoming anniversary of the January 6th U.S. Capitol riot. They say there aren't any current specific or credible threats, but that lone wolf offenders are the most likely to exploit the upcoming anniversary. Their assessment says conspiracy theories about election fraud continue to resonate among domestic extremists and could again inspire some to promote or commit violence. Scary moments for 21 people who were stuck thousands of feet in the air on a, in a tram in New Mexico Friday overnight into Saturday, but they are all now safely back on the ground. The passengers had been stuck on the Sandia Peak Aerial Tramway overnight Friday because of icy conditions. Officials say the last person was safely back on the ground Yesterday afternoon, most of the passengers trapped on board were employees at a restaurant on top of the Sandia Mountains who were ending their shift Friday night. Thank goodness they're all back. Thank goodness. I would See. not want to be one of those passengers. Oh my but gosh. Everyone's safe. Yeah. Good news. Well, it's 836, 27 degrees outside. And coming up next on GMSA, if you're ready for a new you this new year, we have some tips to help you get back control of your life. I think the weather said new year, new me. <laughs> 27 <laughs> degrees this morning at 839. How long will these freezing temps stick around for? Mike will let us know when we come back. All right, we say it every year, another year, another chance to start fresh in 2022 could be the year of you. And between the pandemic, finances, job insecurities, and caring for family last year, it's been a rough year, but this year you can start a reboot. And how can you take back control of your life? Eric Hernandez has the answer so you can thrive in the new year. Always think about the future and that you can always improve. Always Experts say the first step to taking control is to make yourself a priority. Be disciplined about your me time. The New York Post reports that in a 24 hour day, the average American only gets about 43 minutes to do whatever they want. Allowing yourself to unwind every day can help reduce stress and prevent burnouts. Next, control stimuli around you. Research shows that having a phone present while you work distracts you and interferes with your capacity to think. Associate selectivity, set boundaries with difficult people. Log out of negative online interactions and be conscious of how you might be vulnerable to groupthink. Also be a learner. Make it a habit to try new things and explore outside your comfort zone. Say yes to experiences you would usually forego. This will build confidence, make you happier and more productive. But don't be afraid to say no. You don't have to explain yourself. Actually, that's something I've become very good at. Uh, saying no with no explanation needed. No is a full sentence. I try to say no with as much humility and grace as possible. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. There you have it. Well, a lot of things to learn and imply and just kind of live life with a little bit more intention. You know, right? we're saying Jonathan's way too nice. He I, needs to, I need to be need more, to say less, no. less nice, right? Yeah. And Mike, some people are saying no to the 28 degrees right now. It's oh, so yeah. different. I yeah. mean, some people have been waiting for this, though, but. I thought I yeah, liked this, it, but I'm not too sure about that. It's a little too cold. This time, I, I don't know. Yesterday, walking around, and it was kind of humid out and on the 1st of January, so I, I kind of like this, but I'm also inside right now, so if I step outside, that may be a whole different story. All right, it seems like it's been a long time since the bus has been warmed up, but boy, tomorrow morning, definitely you're going to want to take some time to uh, warm up the bus, warm up the uh, the car, and uh, it's going to be, uh, I I beg your pardon, I the explainer on there, 
I was in a hurry to get this graphic put up there. So 53 degrees, sunny skies. We're not going to have mostly cloudy in a sprinkle tomorrow. My apologies on that one. Plus, I was updating the uh, pollen count, which just came out. And Mountain Cedar went up from yesterday's reading. It was about 8,000 yesterday, now back up to 10,460. And mold also went up thanks to all of the humidity we had here around here last night. Now, as far as... Uh, KSAC Connects pictures. This is another beautiful, beautiful picture over there around the Woodlawn Lake yesterday. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, this morning it's gorgeous out there if you want to go for a walk, but definitely bundle up. We're at 27 right now, freezing at Stinson. Most everybody, with the exception of Pleasanton, is at or well below freezing. 24 in Kerrville, as well as Comfort. Bandera, 20 is the cold spot there in Lost Maples. Wind is very strong, and it's going to stay pretty windy all day long with these wind gusts, uh, about 32 miles per hour here in town, 35 at uh, Stinson, as well as Kerrville. So wind chill temperatures, it is down to 4 now for a wind chill in Lost Maples, 14 out there at the airport, 13 in New Braunfels. And as far as dew points, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, of course, yesterday it was very, very humid out there. And those dew point temperatures have dropped down 50 to 55 degrees compared to this time yesterday. That's how dry the air is out there. Plus, we've got really, really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. The water vapor imagery, this darker shade, and then also kind of that um, that brownish tannish shade means that it's bone dry upstairs. And so we're going to have some gorgeous, gorgeous blue skies out there today. And as far as the humidity, it will try to come back into the picture a little bit by Tuesday, Wednesday, and then sort of peaking a little bit. But another front is going to move through here on Thursday. So that's going to knock any slight return of the humidity out of the picture and then also knock temperatures back down. So even after tomorrow, we're looking at another freeze by as of right now by Friday morning as the Gee whiz this morning, 36 degrees below zero at International Falls. The actual air temperature and most of the country right now obviously is well below freezing. And we do have wind chill temperatures. Five St. Louis, negative seven as close by as Oklahoma City. And once again, it feels like four right now over there in Lost Maples. So if you are heading out this morning, uh, bundle up and it's going to stay pretty chilly all day long. 44 degrees, sunny, windy. So we'll still have wind chills to deal with. And then later on today, we may make it back up to 50. It's going to be kind of hard to do. It's going to be a gorgeous day, though. So if you're outside looking or inside looking out, I should say freeze warnings in effect up until 10 o'clock. And then this is going to go back into effect at midnight up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And this will then be for it's in effect right now for tomorrow morning. But uh, for instance, Bear County will not be included in this for tomorrow since we've already hit freezing. That's why the Hill Country is not included in this freeze warning. It's just for the the first widespread freeze in any given county. 25 tomorrow morning, 53 in the afternoon. We'll make it all the way up to 74 by Wednesday. That next front moves on through here. And yes, Thursday is the epiphany, the 12th day of Christmas. The Three Kings Day. Three Kings Day. And so that's when you should have your tree down. By but then. when will you be taking your tree down? If not Thursday, by the weekend. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll give it a little bit. Maybe, Keep it up. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a little easier to do by the, by the weekend as a yeah. weekend task. But that's why that tree is up there. It has nothing to do with any sort of... Uh, Christmas tree collection or brush collection or anything. So thank you, Mike. Sure. Well, the three pointer with just 1.9 seconds left in overtime gave the Pistons the win over the Spurs last night. The final score 117 to 116. We'll have highlights in our later newscast and tonight on instant replay. The Spurs next game is Tuesday against the Raptors. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And here's a look at today's NFL games. The Texans at the 49ers and the Cardinals at the Cowboys. Both 3 o'clock games. We'll also have those highlights later today. Go Cowboys. And in college football, sick and Bears. The Baylor Bears beat Ole Miss 21-7 to in the Sugar Bowl. I know my parents and brother excited about that. They went to Baylor. Again, the sports guys will have highlights from this game during our 5.30 newscast. And don't forget to tune in to Instant Replay tonight at 11, right after the night beat, where our sports team will have the highlights, break down all the top games, and all that information you need to know in sports. Well, 849, 28 degrees outside. Texas Lotto numbers, pick three, three, one, four, Fireball four, daily four, six, eight, five, nine, Fireball two. Cash five, eight, 11, 15, 18, and 29. Texas Lotto one, 16, 19, 39, 42, and 46. Powerball 6, 12, 39, 48, 50, Powerball seven. This was the big 500 million. 
don't believe there was a winner at this time. Power play two. In the news you need to know before you go, two people are dead and two others injured in a shooting that police chief William McManus believes was drug related. It's up around 630 this morning. Officers were called out to an apartment complex on Montrose near South New Braunfels Avenue. That's on the city's southeast side. The identities of the victims, a man and woman, have not been released. Police are trying to talk to another man and woman who were injured to get more information. And strong winds helped spread the flames at a house fire on the city's west side early this morning. Firefighters received the call just after 1.30 a.m. Heavy smoke and fire was coming from a house on Sylvia Avenue. That's south of San Fernando Cemetery between Castroville Road and Highway 90. Everyone inside the home was able to get out safely and no one was injured. The cause of the fire is unknown. All right, let's end the show on a lighter note. Check out some of these unique New Year celebrations from around the country. It's in Plymouth, Wisconsin, where they do a cheese drop. That's a cheese, that's cheese right there instead of a ball drop at midnight, according to local news there. Uh, Plymouth is considered the cheese capital of the world. Wow. That looks like the big cheese heads that they wear. Yeah. <laughs> and in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, they dropped a 400-pound peep at midnight. <laughs> That's right there on your screen. I'm not making this up. The Peeps Chick Drop is the highlight of Peeps Fest, a two-day festival which celebrates the fun and excitement of the peeps. Looks like the peeps on fire there. All right. <laughs> and maybe not as unique as a cheese or a peep drop, but still something different. This is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They rang the new year with an anchor drop, and the anchor actually dropped twice, once at 7 p.m for kids or people like me and Mike who don't stay up till midnight. <laughs> so they don't have to wake up so to wait up so late and then again at midnight for the adults. Let me just watch it in New, in, uh, New Zealand and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Hey, uh, beautiful day, but boy, it's cold out there. Oh, we've warmed up to 30 now. Veritable heat wave, but we uh, did hit 27 <laughs> in the hourly readings, and we still have uh, pretty strong winds out there, so wind chill is still uh, at 4 at uh, Lost Maples, 18 here in town. Freeze warning till 10 o'clock, and then that's going to go back into effect for tomorrow morning overnight. It's going to be a longer freezing period below freezing tonight, so keep that in mind. 50 for a high temperature today, and we're going to be down down into the mid 20s tomorrow. So again, don't forget tonight because it'll be below freezing right about midnight here in town up until about mid morning. Yep, cover thank your you plants, bring your pets yep. and cover your pipes and electric hey, blankets. Hey, Johnson, thank you so much for joining us thank this you. morning. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. Y'all have a good Sunday. Back to school tomorrow.